Hi everyone, this is George Cologne with GeorgeColoneConsulting.com. Here I am going to talk about how I went about making radio boxes that can be deselected. Now, I had a situation where I wanted a yes or no radio box, but you know what radio boxes do when you click on them, you can't deselect them at all. And then my other idea was to use check boxes, but then the problem with check boxes is that in the case of a yes or no question, check boxes don't work that great because you can have a situation where both yes and no are selected. That's not something that I wanted to happen. I wanted it to kind of work like a radio, but have the ability to deselect it completely. So in the situation that I was in, I was using it as kind of like a search filter. So there was basically three options, but I didn't want to add that third option. Like for instance, yes, no, doesn't really matter. But that third option, I don't know, it was just, just kind of additional, didn't want to clutter up the UI with that. By default, like we mentioned before, radios do not allow themselves to be deselected. So I went ahead and went the different route and used Alpine JS which is normally you kind of hear this being used with Laravel, but it doesn't necessarily need to be used with Laravel. It has a reactive side to it. And you basically write your code almost as HTML attributes. So it's sort of more declarative. And I'm going to show you exactly how I use Alpine.js to create a sort of like a radio that can be deselected, but using check boxes. So I'll show you how to do that. Now, one thing that you need to do is include the uh, Alpine JS library. And the first thing that you're going to do is declare which of these HTML blocks of HTML will be the Alpine component. So Alpine does not touch anything in the document unless you say this specific area is going to be a component. So in the case of Alpine, to initialize a component, you have the X data attribute. And normally what you would do is have give it like some initial data. So you might say, um, you know, check this false or something like that. And uh, you can change this piece of data in the future with, with the Alpine directives. In my case, I'm not going to have an initial data. I'm just going to say, I don't have any initial data, but this section right here, this whole section here is an Alpine component. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put labels to each of my check boxes, which I have two of them. And these labels are going to be able to be referenced programmatically. In order to do that, you use xref. And let me see if it's ref or refs. Always good to have the doc documentation here ready to use uh, xref. And I'm going to call this specific input, the uh, DOM element. I'm going to call it yes. And I'm going to copy this. And this DOM element, if you'll notice, this is for the no checkbox. So I'm going to call it no, very simple. Now I'm going to show you how I can reference these programmatically. Alpine has a way to bind event handlers and its declarative way is to use the on attribute and then you use a colon and then you can say click. And then you put the JavaScript expression that you want to execute when this specific checkbox gets clicked. There is a magic variable called refs. And in that variable is an object of all the refs, properties of all the refs that you can call or that you have defined like yes, no. So in this case, I'm going to say that when I click this, I'm going to look for the ref no which will return the underlying DOM element. And then 
because it's a checkbox, I'm going to say that I want to uncheck it. So checked equals false every time that I click this. And the reason is because if no is checked and I click on yes, I don't want no to be checked. So when I click on yes, no will be unchecked. Now I go ahead and copy this to the no checkbox and change the refs to reference the yes up here. And then the same thing. If no uh, is clicked and yes is checked, basically it'll uncheck it. Now let's test this out. If I click on yes, you see yes is clicked or checked. If I click on no, there you go. Yes was unchecked, only no, only no is checked. If I uncheck no, both of them are unchecked. Same thing if I click on no and I click on yes, uh, no is unchecked, yes is left unchecked. Now, very important, if you don't add this X data attribute, look what happens. Click on yes, I click on no. What? It's not working as expected. Ah, it's because you didn't initialize or didn't tell Alpine which part of your HTML is an Alpine component. X data does that for you. So this whole section again, like I mentioned, is an Alpine component. I hope that this was useful for you. And if you'd like to learn more, please go ahead and subscribe. Click that like button and the notification bell. And you'll get notifications when I push out new content. Thanks for watching.